Hey everyone, in today's video, I've got some really flavorful vegan recipes for you, starting with this Cajun pasta with sausage and peppers. We've got a really great appetizer that can also double as a dessert for the holidays and this super hearty shawarma salad that is so delicious. You guys are going to freak out. I'm so excited to share these recipes with you. Thanks to Kinda Wild for teaming up with me and let's get started. The fastest way to make a meal is to start with the part that takes the longest and work backwards from there. So in this case, it's the cauliflower. I'm just gonna rub the cauliflower with seasoning, pop it in the oven, and while that's roasting, I'll go ahead and make the salad and the dressing, and it'll all come together in less than 20 minutes. I start by cutting up a head of cauliflower into nice bite-sized florets, and then I'm gonna add lots of flavor with shawarma seasoning. You can buy this pre-made in the spice section of most grocery stores, but I also have a homemade version as part of the recipe that's linked below. I drizzle on some olive oil and lots of that shawarma seasoning, which has cumin, cinnamon, black pepper, some turmeric, some chili flakes. It's so, so good. A little ginger in there, a little cloves, lots of really flavorful and very aromatic seasonings. That's gonna go into the oven, and in the meantime, I'm gonna make the dressing. This is a nut-free dressing that's nice and creamy. It starts with some runny tahini, and then I like to add some Dijon. This adds depth, and it also helps to emulsify the dressing and make it extra silky. I'll balance that out with some apple cider vinegar, add a little bit of maple for balance, and then smoked paprika, that's the key. That gives this such depth and a really nice kind of hint of smokiness in the background that really complements the roasted cauliflower. I slowly add in my water, whisk until smooth, Smooth, and this is the result. And you can set that aside. It will thicken a little bit if you do it really far in advance, like if you were to make this dressing and then have it the next day, especially as it sits in the fridge, it will thicken up. So if you want to thin it out, just add a little bit more water at a time, stir it up, and it'll be perfect, the perfect consistency. So just keep that in mind if you're gonna be meal prepping this dressing or making it well in advance. But now that the dressing is done, I'm just gonna put all of the salad ingredients in a big bowl. The salad itself is pretty simple and it starts with a lot of fresh kale, which just makes me feel so good. I love salads like this because they're delicious, but they also make me feel good after I eat them. So I'm gonna start by just massaging the kale with a little lemon juice. This is gonna help to break down the kale, make it much more pleasant to chew and also to digest. Once it's reduced by half and it's turned kind of a bright green color, I add some dressing and toss it all together. So shallots actually come with two lobes. So one shallot has these two separate components and I just use one for this recipe, but you can do as much or as little shallot as you like. I actually really like using shallots. I find that they're delicious and they're also very easy to chop up into tiny little pieces. I love that little bit of sharpness and that bite that you get from shallot or from red onion in a salad. It really kind of brings everything to life, but I like to balance that with something sweet and something chewy. So any kind of dried fruit you like will work. I love using dates, so I'm gonna chop them into bite-sized pieces. You could do raisins, you could do dried figs, you could do apricots, but I think the flavor of figs is perfect here. And then you gotta have some crunch. So I'm gonna keep this nut free and do some sunflower seeds. It gives the perfect amount of crunch and of course, lots of added nutrients. Then I'm going to divide this between plates. It makes four side salads or two main salads. I'll top it with the warm roasted cauliflower, which has turned this beautiful golden color and drizzle on lots of that delicious tahini dressing. This salad is flavor town. You've got the hot cold combo that I love. I love hot roasted veggies on a cold crunchy salad. Tons of flavor with that shawarma seasoning on the cauliflower, nicely balanced with the lemony fresh kale salad, smoky dressing, sweet and chewy dates, and that subtle crunch from the sunflower seeds really ties it all together. One of my favorite wine pairings is a green salad with a cold glass of white wine. And I feel like there's a lot of different roads you can go here. With this salad in particular, I think a cava is really nice, especially with all those cozy warming spices that we have on the roasted cauliflower. And I love the little pop of freshness that pairing it with a cava provides. But I also really like pairing it with something that has a nice acidity, like a Chenin Blanc or a Sauvignon Blanc. Both of those would be absolutely delicious and just pair so well with all vegetable dishes, but especially salads like this. So this is a great multi-purpose recipe. So it's a great appetizer if you're gonna be serving kind of a cheese board and you like the combination of vegan cheese with fruit and nuts, this is perfect for that. But it's also a really nice dessert. It's got this sweet and savory thing going on, so it's perfect for people who don't love super sweet desserts, but you wanna have a little something interesting after a meal or at a holiday party if you don't wanna serve a super intricate dessert or you just wanna kinda of change things up and do something different. This is a really great thing to try and people really love it. It gets a lot of oohs and ahs and it's super delicious. So let me show you how to do it. 
The trick to roasted fruit is to use fruit that's not too soft. So you don't wanna use something that is perfectly ripe because this is gonna bake and break down even further. So I like to use a pear that's a little bit more on the firm side. I'm gonna cut this in half and then cut off the back so that it can sit flat. That way the toppings won't slide off later on. Then you can use a spoon or a melon baller like this to easily scoop out the center. I love, like melon ballers spark a lot of joy for me. I don't know why, they're just so handy, so perfect for a job like this. I'll link the one I use below. They're in expensive and just very fun to use. I'm gonna mix together a little coconut oil and some maple syrup and drizzle that on top of the pears. Then I'll season liberally with salt and pepper and that's gonna provide this really nice sweet and savory combo. I love that pears are delicious, both sweet and savory. So this is kind of a great mix of the two and really allows all of the versatility of a pear to shine. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add some fresh sprigs of thyme. I like to just place this right on top. It's going to very gently perfume the pears with a nice herbaceous flavor and it makes a beautiful garnish later on. So usually I pull it off the pears after roasting, set it aside, and then I use that as part of the garnish later. Then I'm gonna pull the thyme leaves off now that they've added nice flavor. And I'm going to go ahead and stuff these pears with a vegan cheese. I recommend using a cashew cheese so that it doesn't melt. Some well, you can use a cream cheese too, but just make sure you use a cream cheese that's not oil-based so that it doesn't melt. I'm gonna pop this back in the oven for about a minute just to warm it through, to soften the cheese a little bit further, and then it's the fun time. It's time to decorate. It's the time to really make these look extra special and perfect for the holidays. One thing I love about this recipe is it's good warm out of the oven, but it's also good at room temperature. So you can really kind of plan ahead and have this as a hot, nice dessert with that melty cheese, or you can serve this with wine and crackers and your other cheese board accoutrements and it will still be delicious. I like to top it with some chopped pecans and then I make a little glaze that kind of tastes like honey because I mix together some maple syrup and lemon juice and that really just brings all of the flavor to life. It sweetens the pears a little bit and that little bit of lemon just really kind of elevates everything. I like to garnish the platter with extra pecans, fresh herbs, and I serve with a knife and a fork because that's the easiest. Chardonnay is really delicious, especially because we have the thyme and the pecans cans and that cashew cheese it all works so well with the chardonnay this is also really good with the malbec malbec is a really good wine to serve with a meal and through dessert because malbec pairs very well with a lot of desserts especially anything that contains dark chocolate or roasted fruits like baked pears poached pears anything like that and it has a very luscious mouth feel as well which pairs really nicely with the smooth and creamy cheese and those soft roasted pears it's just a really pleasant combination and i think you guys will really love it. I've been working with Kind of Wild for a while now and they've recently expanded their collection. They now have a beautiful cava from Spain. They've got a Chardonnay which is actually from the south of France. There's a Chenin Blanc and a Cabernet. One of the things I love about Kind of Wild is that not only are the wines organic and vegan, they also support organic growers and sustainable soil health and they give 1% back to the environment. So it's a very full circle environmentally friendly vegan wine. It's not just a label that they pop on there so vegan still they can drink it because it doesn't have unwanted additives like egg whites and gelatin. It doesn't have any of that stuff but on top of it it's also made and produced in a way that is eco-friendly and also supports growers which I think is so important as well. So all of these wines are sourced from all over the world and you can actually read all about them on the coasters that come in the box when you order it. I don't think I've ever shown you guys these but they're really cute. They all have these different designs on them and this one is for the Chenin Blanc so there's a little map. You can see that it comes from the Columbia Valley. Valley. It has a profile of what it's going to taste like and it even has food pairings right there. So this Chenin Blanc uh, coaster says that it pairs really well with sweet and sour. So if you guys are going to do like a sweet and sour tofu recipe, you could try the Chenin Blanc and see if you like that combo. And even the coaster is made from sustainable materials and printed with vegetable based inks. They literally think of everything. If you guys have been wanting to try Kind of Wild, the link is in the description box below. They make great holiday gifts, great hostess gifts. I love to stock up on a bunch and and then if I'm running to a holiday party last minute, I know that I can grab just a beautiful wine from my collection and bring it with me. I don't have to stop at the store on the way there, look for a vegan wine while I'm like trying to get to a holiday party. I've already got it all good to go. Also great stocking stuffers and stuff like that. So if you have a wine lover in your family, click the link in the description box below, check out Kind of Wild, get them a bundle or get yourself a little holiday gift. I really think you guys will love it. 
This vegan Cajun pasta with sausage and peppers is such a crowd pleaser, so it's a great one to have in your pocket if you're ever gonna be making a recipe for a non-vegan or for a group of vegans and non-vegans. Everybody seems to love this recipe because it's so hearty and flavorful. I start by sauteing my sausages and slicing them up. I'm gonna set that aside and then I take the exact same pan and put it back on the heat. You don't have to wash out the pan here. I'm just gonna put it right back on the stove, add my onions, and I'm gonna saute all the vegetables in that same pan. Not only does it make for fewer dishes, but using the same pan that the sausage cooked in helps to add extra flavor to the veggies. So I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil to the pan along with my onions, and I'm cooking the onions on about medium-low heat. That way I'm not getting any color on the onions, but I'm gonna get them to a nice translucent, which makes the onions a little bit sweet, which really complements the rest of the really bold, intense, savory flavors we've got going on in this dish. I add my garlic, I add my bell peppers, which are so vibrant and colorful. I actually did a mix of orange and red on this day, and I'm gonna deglaze the pan with a dry white wine. I'm using the Sauvignon Blanc from Kind of Wild, and I recommend using a wine that you plan on drinking with the meal, so something really crisp and fresh and acidic like a Sauvignon Blanc is a great combo. Then I'm gonna add some Cajun seasoning, which you can find pre-made at the grocery store, but I also have a homemade version that's gonna be in the recipe below as well if you'd like to make your own. Sprinkle liberal, like it's two and a half tablespoons. It's quite a bit of seasoning, but that's because this is going to be the seasoning for the sauce as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the pan so that the heat from the pan can bloom the spices and bring them all to life. So at this point, the veggies are gonna sweat for a little bit and you might see the words saute, sweat, sear, they all mean slightly different things. When you're sweating vegetables, you're really just cooking them on a low heat so that you can slowly draw out the moisture of the vegetable, therefore concentrating the flavor of the vegetable without having all that moisture inside of it. You're not really looking to brown, we're not gonna caramelize, we're not gonna crisp anything up, we're really just gonna do a low heat for a couple of minutes to draw out that moisture gradually. It only takes a couple of minutes though, so while that is doing its thing, I'm gonna go ahead and make the cashew cream. This is gonna be kind of in the place of heavy cream. A lot of pastas will just kind of stir in like a half a cup or even a quarter of a cup of dairy cream at the end just to add richness and body. So what I like to do is just make a vegan version of that by blending up some cashews, full fat oat milk, and a little bit of nutritional yeast. I'm not gonna season it. We're gonna add all the seasonings later in the pan, but this is going to replace the heavy cream in a pasta recipe, and it also will kind of thicken a little bit as it heats on the stove. Then I go ahead and I add the cashew cream to the pan and instantly we have this beautiful orangey golden sauce that is just perfumed with all of those delicious Cajun spices and as you can see we've got the peppers and the onions going on and it is a little bit thick don't worry that's how it's supposed to look you can turn off the heat and go ahead and finish cooking your pasta but make sure you reserve some of that pasta water because that is how we're gonna turn the sauce into a silky smooth cream sauce without using any dairy at all if it gets too thick you can add another splash of the pasta water, but just over low heat, you wanna to toss the sauce with the pasta all together like this, and you will have a beautifully coated noodle. Every single noodle will be perfectly coated in that sauce, and it smells incredible because this sauce has the, all of those great Cajun seasonings like the oregano, the garlic, the cumin, the smoked paprika. It is flavor town, and I really love the addition of a fresh herb, so I opt for some chopped parsley here. Usually I would mix in the sausage that we sliced up earlier here. The only reason I put it on top was because I wanted to take some pictures for the blog and I wanted everyone to be able to see the sausage really clearly without it being coated in the sauce. But really tossing the sliced sausage with the pasta only adds more flavor. And there's just something about the combination of super savory sausages, sweet, onions, fresh bell peppers, and a creamy spicy sauce that is just absolute heaven. Whether you are serving this to a vegan or a non-vegan, they are going to love this pasta recipe. Okay, so you're gonna have to hear me out on this wine pairing, but when I think of, you know, sausage and peppers and onions, I think a nice cold beer, right? Like that is just a classic combo, any ball game, right? Like any type of barbecue, like that is a classic combo. So if you keep that in mind and you think about how when you drink a beer, it's really crisp and refreshing, and that crisp, refreshing sip helps to kind of counter the rich and unctuous notes of the sausage and, you know, the peppers and the onions, all of that is very sort of heavy and then the crisp beer just helps to cut that, right? It's a perfect pairing 
absolutely delicious. It's also why like pizza and soda is good together. It's like the fatty, the rich, the savory with the cool and the crisp and the refreshing. It's just so good. So with that combination in mind, I actually really love to serve this pasta with the kava. I think the kava is exactly that same combination. It's refreshing, it's crisp, the acidity really helps to bring out all the flavor in the spices and the sausage and in the cream sauce with all the Cajun seasoning that we put in there. And it is just so, so good. So that's actually my personal favorite. I know a lot of people like to serve kavas and sparkling wines at the beginning of a meal as an aperitif, and I do too. It's a very festive way to open a meal or a cocktail party, but I actually think it works really well with this pasta. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you're not already subscribed. All the recipes that you saw in this video are in the description box right under this video with all the measurements and everything, so make sure to check that out if you're going to make these recipes. That's also where you'll find the link to try Kind of Wild. I really hope you guys enjoy, and I will see you in a video very soon. Bye!